Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. Today we got a treat especial. I'm gonna show you something cool as fuck. We're gonna cut this bearing right half in two. And the way we're gonna do it is cheap like borscht. We ain't got the budget for a water jet cutter. The boss won't allow it. No excuse seeing as how I am the boss. But 200 grand uh, for cutting stuff up just doesn't seem like a very good idea at this particular juncture, but you see, this here high-speed steel drill bit, hard as woodpecker lips, looks like I ground it, but no, I cut it. This bearing, an amazing piece of industrial Lego. It would take statically five tons, or rather two ton, 5,000 pounds roughly, and dynamically it would take twice that, say four tons. That's amazing considering the contact patch. How do they do that? Well, first off, the static is lower than the dynamic, because the dynamic is actually floating on a layer of viscous fluid, that is, the grease. So there's no actual metal-on-metal -metal contact when it's spinning and that's why the uh, dynamic load rating is higher than the static. But even statically, you take, for instance, this. You got two tons pressing on here. You look at that. It's spread but through three bearings. And considering this is a point load on a round element, how do they get away with that? They make it hard. Speaking of ancient alien technologies, the hierarchy of materials, an uh, off-quoted pyramid of materials, with wood and plastic down at the bottom, various metals in the middle, cunstain tongue glide at the tippy top, surmounted only by the tiniest eyelet of diamond. If and we could get a chunk of diamond to do our share of driving, we beat that tin Lizzie through the mountain every time. Eh? Look what I found. Diamond bandsaw blades, what for cutting jewelry. Eh? I had no idea such a thing as a jeweler saw existed. Not being a jeweler. But with the qualifier in, between, in the front of it, you figure it's not going to be fair skookum. And it ain't. So my big idea, patent pending and uh, copy wrong. Of course, I'm pretty sure that's how you do it. You just call it like shotgun. Patents are worth every penny what you pay a team of rabid attorneys to defend. So here is my idea. I want to be able to section big pieces of machinery, engines, uh, excavators. I want to split them in twain and put them up on little pegboards like you would see in a natural history museum of butterflies, you know, with the beautiful calligraphy and so forth. I'm an artist at heart. It works on so many levels. Also, the Canadian government now uh, trying to take its teeth away from its citizens. You know, why would anyone ever want or need a firearm? Why should a citizen possibly be dangerous? Fuck you then. I'll cut it right half in twain, stick it on a display. It works on so many levels because it offends. I like to get a rise out of people and well, people call me weird, but better weird than boring. It offends gun guys because you take a perfectly fine firearm, you cut it in two and you make it into art. And it also offends the other side of that because uh, that thing might jump out and kill somebody. <laughs> Behold, the jeweler's saw. And with a preamble like jewelers, you know it's going to be janky as frig. Sure enough, I bought a sight on scene and she's all plastique. But the blade and the bushings got a 40 watt kind of universal motor in there. It looks all the world for something you could spit out of a 3D printer, which also gives me an idea. I think there might be some bounty involved in uh, re-engineered and some, something like this, being able to put on factory blades and just print out a saw what will cut any hard material. Look at this, all plastic, all of it. Listen to this. Fucking piece of shit. If it's something this janky can cut bearings, I think I'm going to be able to fabric cobble something what will cut a Austin Healy bug eye spray. <laughs> 
We're halfway through wise. Time been about a beer, beer and a half. It's hard to judge on account of needing to keep both dirty dick beaters fully engaged with the workpiece. The blade shows a little sign of slowing down, but we're gonna uh, we're gonna get every plug nickel out of her and until she stops chooching, we'll we'll run her on the 3D printed version. I have decided, let it be known, bequeathed, and so forth, that there should be a Y and a spring feed here, so you can sip your beer and keep proper time. It works! <laughs> it's working! <laughs> this is interesting, trying to perform a hydroseal operation here, splitting the ball, and you hear that high-pitched whine, the ball's actually just rolling around in there. I can't cut it. So it needs some glue of some sort. Oh, ho, 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 ho. fuck yeah. And clean up the grease, glue it in place, cut a half or two. Unless there be any question, these balls tough as British beef stick. I had a fair chunk out of her before she started rolling right around. Well, now this one didn't even try. And this is the Cockford Ollie here. I'll just get down in there like so. And then we'll let that flash off. Those balls a tough nut. Like hearing footsteps coming up the stairs while you watch scrambled porn. I think I saw a booby. You never know until you know, and there you go. Now we know. It works. Proof of concept. Fantastical. I gotta get out of here right quick, fast, and hurry. Your wife got a date with one of her girlfriends, which you would think would involve more negligees and pillow fights. Unfortunately, I've cried a time or two at the door. It was more about draining a goon bag <laughs> in Olympic form, a goon bag full of wine and bitching about husbands. Not entirely unlike what we do here. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a voice.